Hello my friend, another Monday, another video. And today's video, I am going to be sharing with you a new resource that has come out from Evan Moore. I am so grateful. If, if you're new here, let me tell you, I have had a very long standing obsession with Evan Moore products. And so I am so grateful and very blessed that they reach out to me when new content and new books are released so that I can then turn around and share them with you. So I do love Evan Moore. I love how they're affordable. I love how they're non-religious or, or secular, I think is the right word anyway. So I can have my state help fund some of our curriculum in our classroom. A lot of our curriculum that we purchase is religious based or is published by a, um, I don't know, a religious affiliated company like Alpha and Omega or BJU or whatever anyway. And so they don't fund those, but with Evan Moore, the state loves them. They're very like um, curriculum standard based. They're great for classroom settings. They're great for at-home settings, of course, is that what I do? And they have a large array between preschool up through sixth grade, and even in some cases, it goes as much as eighth grade. So that's what we're doing today. I wanna share with you the newest one, which is Beginning Coding by Evan Moore. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Okay, so again, we are talking about this brand new resource that Evan Moore has just barely released on their website. You can check the description box below. I'll put a link there for easy access. And um, this is a coding book. And in a world like ours, computer technology is rampant and it's only going to become more intensified for the lives of our kids. And they're going to be masters at computer technology, right? Far more than our generation. Sometimes I think it's gonna be like the way that my generation looks at like my grandparents and how they were so archaic at how computers worked that they just couldn't pick up the trend. Well, now you give a smartphone to a two-year-old and most of the time they can work their way around the apps and they're gonna know where they're gonna wanna go. So. Computer coding and is going to be a huge thing and to begin them at a young age and to make it fun is kind of a fun thing that you can incorporate in your school as just as an elective or something fun you can do during the summer. If you're looking for like summer school electives that you want to throw into your um, summer curriculum. So anyway, what you get in this, it's going to be six lessons or six units, um, starting with algorithms and I don't know it super great, but, um, or I don't know, coding super great, but we have algorithms, decomposition, sequence, patterns, debugging, loops. Then you have a review. And then at the end of the book, look how cute this is. They have these like really darling, um, like things you can either copy and cut out or just go ahead and cut out. And they're just games. So it's like, they have these little coding cards and it just tells you what to do. So you can create your own uh, your kids can create their own coding map or loop, and then they can kind of practice that. My kid has only done one, and it was my older student did a coding app probably, gosh, two years ago now, and I can't even remember what it was, but it just accelerated so fast that he couldn't keep up with it. And as an adult, it was fun. It, it kind of gamified coding, but, um, but this is just a really gentle introduction. In fact, it could probably be used as a science curriculum. Don't quote me on that because I don't know what your state's gonna do. But this very first thing, or even math, because this very first um, one that we did was sequence, like sequences. And I feel like I've seen this in reading and I've seen this in math, like repetition and patterns in math, right? So the very first activity, there's some reading involved. If you're looking, like this can be cross-curricular. If you have to create a portfolio for your student and in your brain, you're thinking, well, we don't do any kind of like computer science. That wouldn't really count um, for my child's grade level. Then you can use it cross-curricular because now you're like, look, we read this and then we deduced what we had learned about and we like did what comes first, second, third, fourth. That's sequencing when you are reading. So you can use it as a reading curriculum. If you're a homeschooler who's looking, how how can I incorporate this into my curriculum and make it count for what my state is looking for? And then of course, computer science is science. 
So you can, you know, write to whoever your contact is who you need to provide this portfolio for and say, well, it's not life science and it's not, um, like weather or whatever. Anyway, I can't remember them all right now off the top of my head, but you know what they are. You're probably yelling them at me, but computer science should count under the science umbrella. So anyway, so then you can see, we just talked about it. So first we're talking about making orange juice. Then we're here talking about making an egg. Um, and then they moved it into, okay, well, it's the same for a robot if you're giving exercises. So when we did this unit with my son, he is four now. We did it with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And so I went through the whole unit with him. In fact, I'm pretty sure that there's even, um, they do apple pie pizza right here. See? Okay. So this is where I got the idea from. So this is just like a cut and paste puzzle. But then I, we went to the kitchen and I, I had the loaf of bread and everything, the peanut butter and the jam out. And so I was having him dictate or verbalize the steps to me. And I was doing exactly what he says. Well, I've learned this from my days back when I was in public school. I'm sure they're, you're familiar with that. Like, oh, you skipped a step, you know? So I was trying to do exactly what he said. And I think it helped him recognize like, oh, so I need to make sure to tell you each step. I can't just assume that you're gonna go from point A to B if I don't tell you to go to B and you jump to the next letter or whatever. Anyway, another thing that I really love to do, this is just kind of like a free tip for you. When I do these kinds of books, and I do them with all of my kids, even my four-year-old, um, we have these decks of blank index cards by the, by the dozens, and we do vocabulary. So the first one is algorithms, and I don't, I didn't save the kids cards. I don't know what happened to it. But anyway, so I just give everybody a card. And this is something that you can do across all ages and just have them make a vocabulary card. Um, I've also done like vocabulary flap books and I've done notes, like whatever. Anyway, like all kinds of different stuff for vocabulary. And you know who has a really great insight um, is pineapples and pencils on Instagram. So go to Instagram and then do the at sign and find pineapples and pencils. And my friend there, she does such a great job at integrating just words and creating activities, whether it's a spelling word or a vocabulary word. And you can easily exchange those because it, as soon as a student would see the word algorithm, this is an unusual word that we don't talk about just in our everyday language, then their brain is gonna start recognizing, oh yeah, I know what algorithm is. It's a pattern of steps put in an order, right? You can have them write it on an index card on one side and draw a picture. Uh, if you're new, my son is very artsy. He loves everything that has to do with creating something. So he gets really into um, just making vocabulary cards on an index card like this. So anyway, those are just some suggestions for you. Um, hopefully, Hopefully you can, you know, utilize them somehow, if not with this book, with some other form of your curriculum. But anyway, head on over to Evan Moore. See if this is something that you want to use. Full color books. They include activities like cutting and pasting. They include lots of drawing. This is a, a painting, a pasting page. Oh, and at the end, you're going to get, of course, here's the, um, the, key, the key, which in such a young aged book, you probably wouldn't need it. They do have the the handbook here, which has all of the vocabulary words actually in it. So you can cut that apart and make it a resource if you want to. But the page that I was trying to find and now I've lost it was the certificate page. So um, if your children are extrinsically motivated, then you can do something like this. You could put this in a portfolio or you can have this at the end of your school year. Um, like ceremony or whatever, just being able to pass out certificates like that for books that they finish. So anyway, hopefully you found some kind of value in this. If you have a question, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I'm always checking my comments so that I can respond to you or answer your questions. Um, and if you are new and you haven't subscribed to my channel, but you're curious about what's going on here in our side of the mountain, feel free to thumb around. I've got lots of videos about things that we do and curriculum we're using and what's not working. And then feel free to subscribe if you like what you see. So have have a great day, guys.